I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't un wear underwear. Things gotta breathe. Call oh, the police now! I am disoriented. I'm a little mad, if you can't tell that already. Like, I'm very, I'm, I'm frustrated, but I don't feel good physically. Like, I can tell you right now, I wasn't getting enough oxygen. <laughs> I think it's time we finally talk about the true victims of the coronavirus lockdown and quarantine, which is of course the middle-aged, short-tempered Karens. Fuck you! Oh. Fuck you! Karens have always been around since the dawn of time. We've just chose to ignore them. Call 911 now! But the good news is, things are opening up again, which means the Karens now can go back out into society and make it a worse place. So, but now, it's come to a head, and like a vampire, the Karen must be exposed in broad daylight. And there's a Karen invasion, as you guys probably know about the Karen invasion. There's another phenomenon going on in our country regarding the coronavirus. People refusing to wear masks. But people, again, I don't know how this became a political issue, but people are straight up refusing to wear masks. Anti-maskers, a group of people that are universally considered to be brain dead. In this video, I document my interviews with related personnel and research regarding this topic, all building up to an interview with an anti-masker. So the first thing I really wanted to find out was why exactly the name Karen. I mean, there are so many other names, but why exactly Karen? So you want me to point out the fact that it has been used in countless jokes by stand-up comedians and countless TV shows. There's one person in every group of friends that nobody fucking likes. Example, Karen is always a douchebag. But even that must have had a reason, right? So I just looked it up. So if you can see around here, most of the people that were named Karen, they are usually from the mid 60s to late 50s. So that means they're from a general age from like 30 to 50, right? And uh, what's what's interesting about the name Karen here is basically that while the most popular names, right? Most popular names have, have been popular like like for all time, right? They've always been popular. Karen mostly came into prominence again from the late, uh, from the mid 60s to the late 50s. So that's why I guess it's so specific in the age range of Karens. Uh, I don't know. This may not add anything, but I just found that to be a bit interesting. <laughs> to your mind when you first heard that the coronavirus outbreak was making its way over towards Nepal? Yeah, the, in fact, this uh, the situation, the case that we learned from the China when they reported that because uh, being a medical person, we never read uh, regarding such type of uh, diseases in, in the past, in, neither in any other textbook. So this is really surprising. And uh, we also... Uh, day by day, we are seeing the lots of complicated cases and complications. So because of that, uh, it, it became a very panicky to everyone. Even this is not only for the general people. It's one. It's much much more panicky and dangerous to the medical team. That's what I perceive. And because of that, I I uh, gone through every day the updates, what's going on in other countries so that we can make a uh, minimized uh, such type of uh, complication even death in our country so that's what we are doing since last six months and because of that uh, all of us the effort that makes the the, the at least the five to six months back behind that incident happening so but how much uh, so far we do we did in the past but we couldn't uh, prevent at all but we are facing at the moment. That's why 
in the very beginning it's quite uh, a feeling of uh, self dangerous disease so that's what i perceive okay so how has your average work day almost has your average workload changed since the covid outbreak in fact uh, my on duty time is 8 hours this every in, in the hospital but after that also i'm up to do on the online so i do but a lot of calls and i am also like a consultant that's why i have to give the many consultation to my juniors advice and everything so it's almost it's 24/7 means 24 hours 7 days a week we are doing this type of work because uh, because of this pandemic also even i i i can't take like rest during sleep because i have lots of thinking coming up how to make uh, the people more safe including myself how to make myself to prevent from such uh, disaster happening to me because if i have i can't help to the others so that is my aim that is why i am saying to everyone safety first and protect me is to protect others that's what the, the principle i use that is why we have to put all the ppe standards and all the precautions of the every seconds to to go forward to treat such type of patient now uh, initially we have one patient we can count in the figures now at the moment we we can't say this patient doesn't have this thing. every patient who comes in emergency we have to suspect that's why we have to treat accordingly that is why because of we can't uh, segregate or the immediate uh, separate the uh, patient with the disease that is why uh, we admitted in the war and lots of uh, even doctors nurses and other paramedics and other supporting staff they do uh, infected because of such thing happen that is why we have to make uh, the difference uh, between the covid and non covid and also the some even in a hospital we have to separate separate wing for the covid and separate wing for the non covid but in emergency it is uh, very challenging that is why the emergency is the main entrance as well as door to every hospital where we have to accept all sort of patient and we have to segregate that is the triage that's how we have to go for for a lot of uh, challenging job at the moment that is why being i am as also the chief of emergency service in tg tripun university teaching hospital i have to look a lot that is why uh, my duty is as it is like 24/7 hours every day and week so that's how i spend these days since last uh, almost 6 months now um, vocal minority of people like try and delegitimize or put down the effects of this uh, virus by saying it has only killed 0.01% of the total world population uh, what do you have to uh-huh. say to those people they're saying this should not be considered a pandemic because 0.01% are only killed yeah this is what the person because we can see the none of the people are similar and they think also the similar that is why uh, in scientific reason as well as we do call statistic significant means among the 100 people never the 100 people are correct or they think uh, it's similar that's why the 5% means the exception everywhere in the world the the, the we, that's why we call 0.05 Uh, person is the, that is the significant in stats means uh, out of 105 people will think different they never accept what the 95 say so this is what they feel that is why uh, also in the world now because of this covid they it is seen we are women wherever we are neither we are in the development nor in, in this developing country Uh, neither we, we are highly educated nor uneducated so everything now we are very rich or poor no matter it, it doesn't discriminate with with anything so that's what the new generation the old generation who we were living at the moment they everybody feels this this is the, what the challenge is that is why the the the, the perception of people is different everywhere if it is not occurring myself or someone else they are saying it's not going to do anything so that's the procedure whereas being a, like i'm an emergency physician and treating and seeing the many patient we can feel how much it is difficult is so that is why even 
this is the only disease that we we can't even toss the the dead body to the relatives because it's more contagious so at the till now there is no such type of diseases reported in the world before then this sar this covid whereas some of the sars and others are there but not as contaminated contagious as this disease and also it makes the risky to the everyone so that is why uh, we we can't uh, say they are wrong neither they are right that's their their the right of thinking that's what we have to say but the main point is because of their thinking because of their uh, activity it should not harm to the others that is why even the principle of medicine or what super we do in life is the three word do no harm the meaning of do no harm is you have to do but doing no harm that is what the principle we have to follow okay what message would you like to directly say to a person that's more discriminatory towards health workers in this situation like what message would you like to say to them directly yeah so directly we have to make understand is that we are the women there is no uh, in true sense in, in in emergency and the point there is no any point of discrimination in we, beside we are the women so that is why the healthcare teams they are we are doing as a professional this is not as a, Uh, as what we is the job one because if we get the pay then i will do more you know there is no no meaning of only the money that is useful because we know we can see the money is not only useful for this that is why the thing is the health professional they put their life as a professional to 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 maintain the humanity so that is the main message i want to give to everyone thank you so but the thing is we have to anticipate such type of uh, incident happen to the healthcare team so that is why the, all the security everything is need to be prepared in this uh, moment what do you like, what has been the most difficult part about working during this whole outburst yeah the, the most difficult part in fact that is why uh, the, the point is the healthcare system depend on the national political system as well as the economical system security system everything that is why this covid explore every dimension of the every speciality of the women uh, lives and the, uh, the the professionals so it is not only the healthcare fella because the healthcare is depend on the national political systems also so the, once the political system is failed means the chain reaction goes on uh, what kind of long term effects do you think the pandemic will have on the society as a whole yeah we 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 call this like a collateral damage this is called collateral like the if the disease is happen means the only the disease to your body one people will die if we can't that is why uh, the research also now saying even it is similar in our context like 80% will have the minor cases they can recover quickly and another 50% need the icu or other uh, treatment this is quite difficult and the 5% is quite very very critical that's the around 5% need the even icu with ventilators and among them the people will die and also we can see now the in nepal the young people are more than the, what uh, we saw in other developed countries so seeing this the thing that uh, we are in difficult and the long term effect is the collateral because of this we can't move means we can't uh, normalize our life as what we used to do so we have to live with the covid it will it will last almost i think it is saying the from the not only 2 3 years up to 4 years like the history of the world in the like uh, the spanish flu and others that also shows us that uh, it will take up to the 4 to 5 years so because that comes up this is not like a sars or ebola that can control and that was controlled immediately in, in some place but this is what that is why this is a pandemic and because of this like uh, that is why the, our technology because of technology like internet that has been so fast developed like it is like a preparation for the covid 
if you can you imagine if we we are uh, 15 20 years before the internet and this happened that how would could be, be the life yeah that would be so over. that's why the you see the 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 natural the the mechanism all it looks like the preparation for the women to survive in this part another part is the mental mentally a lot that's why you see other diseases people like heart disease diabetes cancer tuberculosis malaria other diarrhea because of those diseases it used to be higher death rate but it is strong but the higher death is the mental because of the society because of people couldn't uh, make make themselves cope with this covid cope with the staying alone cope with, cope with the, like uh, like this uh, the uh, lockdown so it is quite difficult for people even uh, they can't they don't know how to live the life without job without food that's why people finish their life that is why we saw a lot of increasing number of mental diseases happening not only it's a that it's a society so that is why the, we have to understand we have to understand to live with the nature because the, the life is only once so the thing is we we have to know how we have to continue this life till the natural uh, death comes so because society is the natural not not the natural death it is like the you are doing the crime by yourself so that's what the impact so that is why the multi dimensional impact of this covid it affect every corner everywhere in the world but the lesson what we learn is we have to live with the nature yes some people are comparing this to the flu and uh, not taking it as seriously so in what ways is this virus more deadly than the flu so that's that's why i'm saying if unless and until it happened to myself i don't realize so that is the meaning of the what uh, this type of people thinking because they don't know so if they are like me who are seeing the every day the such type of patient who is dying in front of you then you will you will realize how it is deadly because the, this this virus affect every organ every system of our body it affect mainly to the lungs and in lungs also it is like it is like alveoli the thing alveoli is like a balloon when you 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 blow the balloon it makes this little bit and you will uh, like shrink and then the blow up is like oxygen pumping so even inside that is that we call epithelial cells that's why these these virus goes and block in the as you know the rna dna is because all the nuclear our 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 part so that is goes and block such type of our actions we if you see the cellular level you understand the, like the uh, computer so that's the same we are also the lots of mechanism that is similar with all these biochemical uh, reactions so that depends that is why this uh, the, the 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 gene of this virus again so that will hamper means it it hampers the oxygenation of our tissue so we do only survive in this world is because of the oxygen and there also the nitrogen also the carbon dioxide everything but you this virus will block the mechanism of oxygenation of your tissue means that will impact everywhere from the vesicle the lungs to the heart then it goes to the brain and other other organs liver and kidney so it depends upon the immunity how much you have so it is not not even conclusively know what is the true mechanism of because every uh, death is different and they are similar death. every death is different because we i have seen some of people come with uh, walking within 2 hours they die we got the history that some of the people immediately die we see the some of people staying in in the icu ventilator many days after they die but some people lots of people they are recovery so that is why the difficulties the how the perceive of the people it is it's a it's a background of their knowledge their attitude and their practice so that's what they are speaking but why i am not speaking such type of thing because what i'm seeing what i'm doing that means i'm seeing my education my knowledge and my practice and my attitude because of this three 
the knowledge education and practice changes my attitude so that's why my attitude is towards is not like all whereas other people is different that's why their attitude is speaking regarding uh, such type of thing like uh, why do you think even with all the scientific evidence that we have why do you think people still want to believe in all this outlandish uh, theories like the covid is caused by 5g and stuff yeah that's that's what they there that is why i'm calling i'm saying their perception you know that's perception you have occupied mind initially then that is very very we call tabu isn't that the people what they believe is believe you no matter if they die they are happy to die with their tabus and beliefs so this type of thing everywhere in the world that is why i'm saying we are the humans the only the humans we are the different than the other animals that is why we are the only the humans that we can think we can interpret it, we can analyze we can express so what do you think about the people that are flat out refusing to wear a mask during this pandemic like they don't want to wear a mask in public areas what would you like to say to those people hey esos retarder and what exactly is a carrot According to Urban Dictionary, Karen is a stereotypical name associated with a rude, obnoxious, and insufferable middle-aged white woman. Karen takes everything wrong with a typical over-entitled Western woman and cracks it up by several thousand percent. They are a mutated subspecies of descendant from the soccer mob, and many of them have their traits, such as short temper, a clown, bold. haircut and unnecessarily large SUVs to take their kid to soccer practice the current meme has multiple different origins each one using ideas in a slightly different way but one of the most prominent uses was developed on reddit thanks to a redditor who inspired the entire subreddit known as r/fuckyoucare devoted to turning a saga into a meme Karma Cop 97 is a 17 year old from California. He made a subreddit almost 2 years ago as a joke and named it after the now deleted user account called Fuck You Karen. So where did this meme come from? Why the name Karen? Researchers have pointed to the demographic characteristics of the name Karen. According to social security data, Karen soared in popularity in the 1960s, peaking at the most popular baby names of 1965, but never had a resurgence. This meant that this certain name was able to represent a woman of certain age range more specifically. Just to have a little bit of fun, let's look at some of the Karen Outrage videos and let's try to see what their motive behind their outlast was. But you know what? Comment. You need to go home. I am from here. Look it! Go home! I am here from here. Go home! I don't care about your Facebook or your video. You play games, we don't play games. Oh, what kind of game are you playing? So in this clip, the Karen is angry that the person Fleming has not parked his car properly but if you watch the entire clip it's revealed that the Karen herself has not parked her car properly nice twist of hypocrisy you're there way you too close get away from me you don't you even know up, how to park the car but the thing to note here is uh, she was angry at him more specifically using the phrase go over and over again trying to imply that the person behind the camera is not from here and does not belong here that that's a really that does not mean anything but that's like saying that you don't belong here and trying to imply that he should go back to the country that he came from which he probably lived or was probably born in the united states whatever it just comes uh, more handy in the next clip where she is apparently angry at someone for using the staircase to exercise and the thing is in that park there's a multiple staircase but she just didn't want to be inconvenienced into using the other staircase and additional context the person behind the camera is again an Asian woman and i keep on bringing that up because this Karen is like the most wanted Karen ever the authorities have tried to track this Karen down for several racial attacks the torrance police chief says that the woman now linked to three racial attacks in her city is 56 year old lena hernandez that's right and at this point police say they have been unable to track this woman down they have been to several addresses no it's not enough Park your car. No. Like what the hell? You better get the. F so in this clip, this Karen is angry that the cops told her to move her car because she was illegally parked. How about 
not park illegally in the first place. Like, come on! Like, you can't be this blind to your own faults now, can you? Is this your property? Hi, I'm asking you if this is your property. Why are you asking? Because well, it's private property. Because it's private. In this last clip, this Karen was angry that a man was stenciling. Stenciling, that means it's like temporary. Stenciling Black Lives Matter in what appeared to be, not, not appeared to be, it was actually that person's home. That someone was repainting Black Lives Matter on his own home. And it's so funny because like you can literally see her lying in the middle of the clip. Like, you live here, right? You yeah. said so. Yeah. Then um, I suggest you call him or call the police. Or uh, because you're accusing me of a crime, correct? What I'm asking you is why are you... And I'm not answering you. Oh, okay, well then, call the cops. And when she's caught red-handed, lying, she, she does not back out. She, she again reaffirms her claim. I mean, that's, that's typical Karen behavior right there. Karen is in fact an acronym. Know your rights, accuse everyone, request a manager, escalate to authorities, and neglect reason. All the behaviors exhibited by a Karen can be all taken into and all summarized into being extremely entitled and narcissistic. To back up my claim, most entitled people are susceptible to schizoid personality disorder and borderline personality disorder. And by looking at the symptoms of both personality disorders, we can compare it to the behaviors that were exhibited by all the Karens and then we can conclude whether most Karens are entitled or not. Most of the symptoms that were observed in a person that has borderline personality disorder or schizoid personality disorder can be observed in a typical Karen as well. So what causes this entitlement? My theory is it's probably because of their upbringing. Uh, most Western countries have something known as permissive parenting and there's actually research that found that there is a positive correlation between permissive parenting and entitlement among the children. As found by Giverts and Segrin 2012, they found a positive correlation between permissive parenting styles and psychological entitlement. Furthermore, in California, there was less amount of people that claimed to be entitled because of the influx of Asian American or students from Asian background. That goes to show that it's probably because of the parenting style that one becomes entitled. No one is born entitled, but because of the parenting style and because of their upbringing, they can become entitled. Another interesting question that I had was why are there more female Karens and less male Karens? So I, and that's because of the differences between the genders. Most entitled males are usually autotopic and they don't like to share the things and they keep everything to themselves. But most female Karens are sociotopic and they want to be defended by their peers, they want to show off their actions to their peers. Other gender differences were noted by Rose and Anastasio 2014, who examined correlates of narcissism and entitlement. Narcissism was unrelated to sociotropy. That is, dependence on others. Unlike narcissism, entitlement involves others rather than being more self-oriented as narcissism seems to typify. Further, sociotropy was more common in women than in men, while autonomy was more common in men than in women. This indicates that while entitlement may be equally common for both sexes, it's expressed differently, with women relying more on others doing things for them to prop up their sense of entitlement, while the same sense is autonomous and self-oriented in men. Specifically, entitlement was not related to the aspect of sociotropy that involved pleasing others, but was positively related to concern for what others think as well as dependency on others. That is, entitled people may be more prone to put on a show of sorts because they're concerned with the opinions of others and rely on others to give what they want. In contrast, narcissism, which is again more common in males, is often unconcerned with the opinions of others. Entitlement gains its powers from others through demands and the entitled person being treated specially. When someone, well, not just someone, let's be clear here, when Karen films her own public meltdown and posts it to Facebook, it's her sense of entitlement that's driving that behavior because she wants other people to see it and defend said behavior. Because you're discriminating against me now, do you know that? I'm, I'm, I'm you're discriminating against me. The common trait associated to Karens are they are typically housewives. Now that necessarily does not mean they're illiterate. What I believe is they have been educated, but they have not gone to college and they are more vulnerable to pseudoscience. And while we are on that topic, why don't we talk about
conspiracy theories exist. Before conspiracy theories used to exist in a way to explain life-changing and drastic events, it were supposed to give answers to something that was not explainable, that gave comfort to the people. But throughout time, conspiracy theories have slowly but surely changed. Before when conspiracy theories were sparked by a reality sifting event that was sparked by a big event, now conspiracy theories just appear out of the Previous popular conspiracies were centered around history changing events, 9-11, the moon landing, the assassination of JFK. Today's conspiracy theories like Pizzagate just seem to be pulled out of thin air. There's no momentous event that demands our reaction. Not only that, but before conspiracy theories used to be targeted towards big corporations, to the government, and some unexplainable force, right? But throughout time, again, conspiracy theories have changed, and now they mostly target experts, people that have more knowledge than us. The idea of experts was there because not everyone could be knowledgeable in every field. So we put down some systematic reporting systems, we put down various systems in place so we could trust the experts. This projection marks a shift in conspiracy theories. Older conspiracy theories, like those surrounding the JFK assassination or the moon landing, might exhibit a distrust of the government and take some interpretive leaps. And to be fair, the government has done its fair share of shady things. These older theories might try to make sense of the life-changing events of the day. In a world where one felt cheated or disempowered, they helped bring order and clarity. But many of today's popular theories, according to Professor Nancy Rosenblum, are all conspiracy and no theory. The purpose of conspiracy theories is no longer to explain reality or offer some account of the world. Instead, the point is to erode trust in public figures or institutions. But the nature of today's conspiracy theories mostly target experts. People are losing trust in the experts. And because they are losing trust in experts, they become more susceptible and more inclined to follow pseudoscience. Pseudoscience often looks like real science. Experts will be trotted out, MDs, PhDs from real universities. They'll even have evidence and studies. But one of the most interesting things about pseudoscience is the use and abuse of this evidence and the basic problem of context. Claim relies on a few things. One, a misunderstanding of the context of the experiment. Two, a large interpretive leap that goes above and beyond the extremely limited hypothesis that the experiment is testing. Cue the science explaining text on screen and the use of the word implies. Most pseudoscience are built around basic scientific principles, but most of them take a large interpretive leap about the scientific experiment. Most of them misrepresent past scientific experiments, and most of them are frankly taking a lot of mental gymnastics to reach their conclusion. Koch's work in microbiology is the entire reason why we know when you've got, say, the flu instead of COVID. And it's Robert Koch who Cowan cites to support his claims that COVID-19 isn't caused by a virus. And in line with making logical leaps from real science, Cowan uses Koch's postulates as a reason to explain why COVID and the flu are hoaxes. For one, he claims that in Boston during the Spanish flu, they sucked the snot out of people and injected it into healthy people, eliciting no symptoms. That would make it disqualified by Koch's third postulate. Except, well, we looked at that paper and the author pretty much says, I'm pretty sure we're doing everything wrong. Ironically, the whole reason people found the virus that caused the flu was Koch's postulates. Unsure of what was causing everyone to get sick with the Spanish flu, some suspected a bacteria called Pfeiffer's bacillus, while others suspected a specific virus. Importantly, bacteria are much larger than viruses, so they can be filtered out with tiny little virus-sized holes. True to Koch's postulate, in 1918, two French researchers were able to infect monkeys and a human with their isolated bacteria-free virus juice who subsequently got sick, thus giving strong evidence that the flu was caused by the influenza virus instead of Pfeiffer's bacillus. Additionally, other researchers helped rule out Pfeiffer's bacillus because they found it in all kinds of people without the flu, thus violating Koch's first postulate. Koch's postulates are not perfect though, and even he realized this. For instance, some people contract infections but don't show symptoms, and while we might want to say, boom, Koch debunked, there's plenty of other reasons to believe that microorganisms are still infectious without affecting everyone who contracts them. Like when a certain Irish cook managed to give typhoid to a bunch of the families she cooked for, despite being perfectly healthy. But people like Cowan, playing it fast and loose with the scientific principles they dish out, will say things like Koch's postulates assert that 100% of people with the virus or bacteria should have symptoms, an idea that not even Koch believed. 
And of course, there is little to no experimental evidence that suggests viruses are just cell poop, and I'm unaware of anyone blasting lab cells with 5G waves that was able to produce the novel coronavirus from nothing. Uh, pseudoscience does not prey on people that are dumb, they prey on people that have basic scientific understanding but don't have the expertise or do not have complete expert knowledge about everything. But the kicker is some of the pseudoscientists are actual doctors. They have been qualified and trained professionals. Firstly, most doctors are not researchers. Sometimes they only focus on memorization of every principle they learn and try to apply it in everything else, which is simply incorrect. But here's our favorite part of the story. Cowan is a medical doctor. He went to medical school. He should have the medical context for why these claims are completely bonkers. But it's also worth noting, most doctors are not research scientists, and their training focuses on rote memorization, not critical thinking or modern research techniques. And this is at least part of the reason you can find plenty of people with medical degrees saying the dumbest things about vaccines or coronavirus. They think simply being armed with the facts in a vacuum will lead them to the right conclusion. First, he claims that 5G was launched in Wuhan, China, where COVID originated. Aside from the fact that this is just wrong, as 5G services previously existed in parts of the US and South Korea, this is allegedly correlational evidence, as is a series of pandemics that coincided with radio and other technology. At this point in the video, countless lords have likely already commented, LOL, correlation doesn't equal causation. And that's true, but correlation is important evidence, evidence that we use all the time. And the fact that places which have no 5G are also experiencing COVID outbreaks is evidence that this specific correlation is bullshit. What should we do with all these evidences and claims provided by pseudoscientists? We can say it's bad evidence because correlation does not mean causation. The context of these experiments have been taken out. But there's one thing most pseudoscientists have really focused on, and that is the critical experiment. The crucial experiment was an idea set forth by Francis Bacon, who many of you know as the scientific method guy. You've probably heard a story like this. People have some outdated or wrong idea, and someone has a eureka moment designing an experiment to settle the case once and for all. Think Newton with his prism proving his theory of light. Or if your energy guide, the double slit experiment is the crucial experiment that proves you can realign people's energy by snapping. And I'm making sounds with my hands. I'm putting energy into the field around somebody's body. Even though we remember a lot of critical experiments, we have to understand that critical experiments are very rare and most of the times they are not even possible. We have to understand while doing any experiment, we are never testing out a single hypothesis. There's always a countless amount of factors that goes in this. When one wants to test the idea that the flu is infectious, one might cough on a healthy person to see if they get sick. But there is an innumerable amount of assumptions and hypotheses embedded in any simple test. For instance, that the flu virus travels via air, that it's always present in a sick person's lung or throat, that a sick person is always infectious, that viruses exist, and so on. When an experiment fails, Duham argues, it's impossible to say where the failure lies. Most sort of science experiments are not even peer reviewed, which is very, very important in the field of science right now. Science is not an individual practice. It has to be worked on by peers, it has to be reviewed by peers, and it has to be built on by our peers. Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch would have been relegated to the dustbin of history if their ideas about germs weren't built upon by countless experiments and theorization of their peers. Not only peers who replicated their experiments, but built upon their techniques as they went looking for microbes, developed vaccines, and looked for evidence that poked holes in their theories. Even the French researchers who isolated the flu virus would have been long forgotten if their evidence wasn't corroborated and built upon. An entire web of knowledge is built. Now, what I think most of the scientists do is they have a conclusion that they want to make and then they do the research retroactively. Instead of having all the evidence and then building upon the evidence and finding a conclusion, most of the scientists have a conclusion that they want to make and then they try and retroactively find all the evidence. And science simply does not work like that. Most of the science builds upon our basic knowledge of science. They misconstrue the context of the principle and they stretch out the applicability of the principle. And it's only the full context of that principle that we can debunk the pseudoscience. Built. Next time you see someone touting an experiment that seemingly upends everything we know about one thing or another, ask yourself, does it really? Many conspiracy theories have a smoking gun, like Andrew Wakefield's discredited study linking autism to the MMR vaccine, or Cowan's slam dunk of a study from a hundred years ago. If pseudoscience is appealing because it latches onto scientific principles that we vaguely remember from high school, the full context of those principles is what often makes pseudoscience fall apart. 
It's the web of knowledge, not individual facts, studies, or tests that makes science robust. So when Cowan points to the very basic principles of virology to disprove the idea that COVID-19 is an infectious disease, it's only the context of those principles that can save us. And for scientists, Oreski says, it's not just on them to tell the world what they know, but how they know it. You want to go down the conspiracy rabbit hole? What exactly is a conspiracy theory? Uh, I don't know about the general consensus of people when it comes to the definition. But to me, a conspiracy theory is just... Um, a thought or an accusation to um, the reality we live in without, uh, generally without uh, a base, or even if they do have a base, they, they lack proper evidence to um, make it a general belief among the people. It's basically just a stupid thing someone says and another person adds something to it until they make it believable. Yeah, why do you think conspiracy theories exist? It's because people are bored, in my opinion. I don't think many conspiracy theorists believe in conspiracies. Uh, <laughs> it's just people are bored with the news. Uh, I don't... It, it comes up because people's imaginations go wild and someone's like, oh yeah, I've had the exact same thought that they add something more to it and it just gradually becomes this big thing that everyone discusses and people start bringing up proof. I don't think anyone genuinely believes every conspiracy theory they read. They're just in it for the shits and giggles. Uh, like, opinion. what do you think uh, is the most appealing part about a conspiracy theory? Like, not in general, right? Like, there's like a conspiracy theory. Like, why do one someone wants? Why do someone like, let's say, believe in the nine eleven conspiracy theory? Now nah, the nine eleven one. Let's not talk about it because, um, okay, I, actually, it's kind of not to sound like a total guy with a tinfoil hat, but it sounds legit. Okay, what about the JFK assassination conspiracy theories? Why do people oh. want to believe in those? Uh, see, conspiracy theories, they, they need something. They need a shock factor. They need a wow factor. Like, okay, first they bring up the death of a president, right? And they're like, oh, it, it's, a, it's the death of a president in the modern era. How is that possible? In a crowd, they just find a topic that seems appealing, you know, like the president fucking died, you know, and he, they bring up theories, then they find out background, it's basically, they just find an event that they spew random things, they connect random dots if the guy's mom was Ella and if JFK's stepmom's brother's ex-wife was called Ella, they will connect those two dots, you know, it's basically just that. It appeals because it's so bizarre or sometimes it appeals because people actually thought of it. There is, it just needs that one wow factor. Obviously, uh, there has been a shift in the types of conspiracy theories, like, before if conspiracy theories were, like, based around uh, reality shifting things, like, the uh, like 9-11 or JFK assassinations uh, conspiracy theories these days just come out of thin air uh, is that something that you have noticed and if so could you like like tell why that is of course I've noticed it just look at the Chucky okay um, I'm basing most of my things off of that prick Shane Dawson who I still kind of like I right know he's the guy I I give 80% of credit to random conspiracy theories becoming mainstream. Uh, so, it used conspiracy theories used to be this thing where um, people used to live and die by the, the thing they believed in. But now it's just random facts that don't add up. Uh, of, it has become a big thing because, you know, chat rooms have become bigger. For, um, discussion forums, random things like water, aquafina water, and fucking Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, it, it, there are still some big ones, but the smaller, useless ones have become more mainstream. Uh, it, it's just because uh, conspiracy, th quote unquote, conspiracy theorists uh, 
don't want to get into the bigger conspiracy theories theories because it sounds like some gibberish so they go and see the smaller ones just so um it's they say it as a joke but then many people believe it but they also believe it so it's like haha if you if you do believe it then okay you're with me but if you don't haha i don't either so that's what i think is happening because you know do you think there's any importance to conspiracy theories like or is it just complete waste of time i mean um entertainment is a huge factor obviously but <clears throat> yeah some theories do hold the government accountable for some or uh, general organization fuck they hold uh, an organization accountable to something like the chalky cheese one they actually um that was a suspicion uh, that was among many many people and they this they said no it doesn't happen and the moon landing theory was fake that that one's a huge one things like those um i don't think we need to hesitate hesitate to ask but uh conspiracy theories basically i do think there's a reason for their existing uh, number 1 to get views on youtube number 2 to laugh with your friends and number 3 to um join a cult that believes that everything the government does is fake because they are salamander people yeah those are my reasonings okay so what's the major difference between like well established conspiracy theories like again uh, the moon, like as you mentioned moon landing chucky sees 911 jfk and like the more outlandish ones like uh, 5g causes corona or uh, <laughs> the earth is flat what's the difference in what's like are, is there a difference in the crowd of people that choose to believe in those conspiracies like do a certain type of people believe in these type of conspiracies and certain type of people believe in other type of conspiracies no nah, it's like different groups uh Okay, the Earth is flat. You know, they are actually renowned people who know that, but none of them are scientists. None of them have like a good background uh, in education. You know, so the people who believe the Earth is flat are basically retards. Uh, the five G corona thing. Now that's I don't know about that one. You know, there are like actually a lot of people believing that. Um, so no comment 5g of course causes corona i don't want 5g in nepal um see it's like this the bigger you can't tell by the bigger conspiracy theories because they only have like a black and white it's like who oh, did bush did do 911 and it's like yes or no but the thing about flatters or flatters and nurses is that there are many kinds of people number one the people who are like not they are just retards number two the crazy people who are like um not the earth is flat the government is lying they are, i would categorize them as retarded people who have who are insecure in some way so they project that insecurity in the government number three there are those people who say that the earth is a dome the sky is the heaven and we are uh, being carried by uh, a turtle yeah those people i don't know about them they they should just you know uh, read a book or something eat, eat an apple there are levels to a conspiracy theory how deep you can go uh, surface level is knowing about them i tend to do that and when you go deeper there are people who believe it uh, like you know there was that one basketball guy who was like yeah i do believe the earth is flat and when you go lower it's like a cult where their whole life is defined by conspiracy theories i don't think that's healthy at all um it's just a level of devotedness to something i gen- i really think that it's all because they have had some kind of um personal experience like government tax them for nothing and they started believing the earth was flat i don't know uh, that's what i think there is either they're all retarded but i don't want to see that or uh, they all have some kind of thing it's it's all 
uh, personal experiences, I don't believe there is. Okay, uh, the last qu- Okay, the last question, and this is a little bit different than the rest. Uh, what is one conspiracy that you genuinely believe in, and why do you believe in it? Oh fuck, that that's a good one. Does the Epstein kind of co- co- is is that considered as? Yeah, meaning? I guess it's a conspiracy, a... but it was overblown because of the meme. Uh, okay, so nah, that's not a good one. Wait, let me think. Um, uh, I kind of genuinely do believe that um, organs are being harvested in the U.S. and being sold to the Chinese government. <laughs> I, I I genuinely did do still do believe that because there is actual video proof and there are actual documents. Um, you can go look it up. It's like nurse talks about harvesting organs from a dead baby. Uh, should I explain why I believe in that? Or yeah, sure. is that too? Yeah, yeah sure. so there's, there's this thing in uh, New York City. There was a bill that was passed that lets you abort. It's called a late, late term abortion or something. I don't remember. It lets you abort a baby after you've given birth to it. Did what? Uh, y- y- yeah. That oh. that's a thing apparently. Okay, now that's uh, literally murder. Like I, I, not to sound like I'm pretty kind of right orientated, right? I'm a centrist a little bit to the right, but my policies mostly align with uh, like maybe Sanders a little bit, like on the same libertarians. Bro, it goes deeper. So listen, there's this guy. I right? know. I think he was the mayor at that time. He goes on a talk show, you know, and he, the. Like the bill just got passed and people are like, "What the? F- w- w- what's the bill about?" And he's like, "So, uh, we take the baby from the parents, okay, and um, we keep it comfortable until we decide what the parents want, you know." So that's the beginning of the theory, you know. And he, of course, they take the baby to the back room and you know. Um, stuck its little. Nah, I'm not going to say. The they they kill the baby apparently, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it goes deeper. The nurse, one of the nurses who apparently um does that. I I'll send you the link. Um, one of the nurses, she literally said, "Oh yeah, I get. Uh, I just bought like a new yellow Lamborghini or something." Uh, the Chinese government pays really well. Uh, we take it in a white van to the airport. Bro, it, oh it, it, it's so oh my ridiculous, God. but it's actually, was, was, bro, it's actually there. Was there an actual bill? Did it get passed or something? Yes, it did get passed. I think it is still, yeah, it's still relevant. Okay, yeah. It's it, called that... a late abortion or something. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Just look it up. Uh, what's okay, it? uh, Bro, it's a real thing. It, when I said it first, I know I sounded crazy, but as I started building up, I was feeling more confident that I don't sound like a retard. Virginia. Later. No, it's New York. It's oh New York. God. It's New York. <laughs> it's oh New God. York. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't. Are you converting me into a conspiracy theorist? No, or... no, no, no. Oh, stay, okay. stay on the same side, please. I need a friend who is, like, not crazy. No, but there are no articles. Wait, there are articles, you know? Like, you can see many people have searched about it because after you literally type late term abortions, it comes New York State. And... Uh, New York law does not allow... No, this is fee... What? The New York government, Andrew Cuomo, signed a bill legalizing abortion up till birth. It's like late, late term abortion, like literally a day before that... it gets birth. It is supposed to get birth. I don't think the delivery happens. I'll fact check okay, on that. Yeah, but, but that's still... Oh my god. That's still mur- that's still murder. That, the that's baby is basically conscious. Not to be not to be fully political, but that's murder. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh I wanted to say this to someone for so long. Yeah. Late term abortions. 
is called late term abortions how okay so um when people talk about abortions up, up to 3 months i get it i know up to 4 months okay i get it to a certain point after like 8 or 9 months you can actually sometimes hear the baby crying from within the womb they're alive they're alive and uh, how can you see what is nah like okay i'm not now this is not <laughs> it, 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 it's not in the 37th week it's 8.5 months it's 8 eight... <sighs> yeah like so, okay you, okay some people good. would say like even like abortion in the first week is murder and nah? yeah but this is legit murder <laughs> it all comes down to uh, what we define as life ultimately but it's like it's, it's not ba- the first breath see yeah, it's not but the baby is alive inside the womb like yeah. they checkmate leptards how come you don't kill uh, how come you are vegans but you agree to kill a baby that's not fair <laughs> that's so fucked up oh my god Oh my god. Okay, the last part of what selling it to the Chinese government, you might um, Yeah, yeah, I might but yeah. what are, what else are they going to do? <laughs> the first one. Like that 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 that, that, that piece my suspicion like I mean like they are going if they are going to go ahead and kill the baby, might as well. <laughs> Bro. <Brother. laughs> oh uh, yeah, might as well, might as well. But now nah, that that's a whole I fell down the vatican being a pedophile ring i won't even consider that as a conspiracy theory it's like basically proof stop this video was about mass let's get back to talking about mass so in the rise of the pandemic all these karens all these conspiracy theorists they wanted a new target and what was it oh 5g equals corona mm, yeah that was kind of sticky but one thing that's even more ridiculous that are flat out refusing to wear a mask during this pandemic like they don't want to wear a mask in public areas what would you like to say to those people you see uh, you see again i'm saying among 100% if we see the 80% they will do, get mild another is complicated and uh, if we, if that is the easy way we can show the five fingers every in, in every school because none of the fingers are equal similar they have different function but when they need to comes their their unity and their one function so that applies everywhere so that applies everywhere that is why uh, the 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 uh, disease itself is not same thing happening to my body to and your body to someone else that is what the our our system is different that is why we, we the simple example is the blood group because if you have even a we have a plus or a negative have been a plus again there are a lot of other different things so everybody has a unique so that's why the virus also goes and it try to react our body but our body defense so that makes the different in such point again so that is why what we need to think is again our anatomy anatomy is everyone is same the physiology is also similar but uniqueness is the one our body uh, making ourselves uh, to to protect our own body is the different so that is similar but everyone has a unique that that is why this this difference comes and goes in every field in the world 
to uh, like can we stress on and uh, the importance of wearing a mask in no, I I come back I I come back that is why uh, the you need of the mask and those things because initial, we know this is like a droplet infection that means if you cough if you spit out that comes from the because this this virus is more infected to your lungs that why if you cough that comes off and it spread and droplet infection is also the so much so speed when it coughs sneeze it is so fast moving particles that goes surrounding that's why we maintain the social distance that come and the mask it is the one protection so there are different type of masks that's how if you have a heavy loaded uh, virus people like i'm i'm doing in my emergency and i issue i have to put special not only sufficient n95 then n95 means only the 95% protection not the 5% then n99 means 99% then 100 means again 99.97% so there are another respirator that comes you have to put the marks like you see the in gas uh, attack or something like that of the terrorism that goes in the world and you have to put this gas so it depends how much virus load again this is we call the virus how much virus you have because the the complicated patient who is full of virus in his every part of body he is more dangerous and because people those are walking even if you are infected means you are only the 80% among them who have a less number of virus and also their body try to control that means you are producing very minimum so that is why the general public need only the surgical masks to protect it is only not to protect only this virus because of that's why in the history if you see the tuberculosis spread because of this wearing the mask by this 5 to 6 month tuberculosis markedly decreased in the world even what i'm treating in the in my practice so you see the result it is not only the covid you are protecting the tuberculosis you are protecting have you been with the other uh, like common cold no this time if you see the before one year you will be sneezing you have cough you have lots of common cold you see in hospital very minimal people come so that's why the the, the effect of the mask it is not only the covid it is for many other diseases so people have to understand this so you the, the thing is of course when you are staying alone you are in the, the open space you take it out no problem so it depends where you are that's why we explain the general people to understand when you moving in among this like in a bus if you are traveling with the 100 people so some of among them one person came very strong positive he will spread everyone so that is what the meaning is that so that is why the mask is important it is protect not one years it protects to others that is why again i am saying the principle do no harm it is not saying don't do harm you say the different meaning i am not saying don't do harm i am saying do no harm whatever activity you do it should not reflect to harm others so it is a simple meaning if you don't want to put the marks you stay alone you stay separate you travel in your own car don't mix it with others you can enjoy your life but if you want to be you go with the community you want to be stay with others do no harm what how do you do do no harm means you have to wear a mask it is a simple message so that is why do you have to try to understand how do you understand perceive so that is, if you want to enjoy you go you stay alone you don't need to have mask found a new enemy yes these things the n95 marks by taking advantage of the molecular scale stickiness of matter using many layers of fibers that catch straight moving large particles as well as zigzagging small particles and having an electric field that attracts all particles you get a mask not a strainer that's really good at trapping both large and small airborne particles and does a reasonably good job at filtering out middle sized airborne particles precisely what fraction of those sneaky medium sized particles get blocked gives you the number of the mask if at least 95% of those particles are filtered out then the mask is rated n95 any marks now i've been using this for a while i'd say it's pretty old and it it it's it's helped me to a lot of polluted areas a lot of dust but in the pandemic you're not supposed to be wearing this cuz it has uh, a valve in it right that means that even though you are protected yourself 
uh, you can still spread the COVID because of the valve and that's kind of selfish so I've switched over to this one it has no valve but technically does the same thing we have this as well now again I, I don't think this one is as effective as the 9 and 95 I think it's really not effective but the thing is even this mask is a lot better than nothing it's to some extent it kind of stops it kind of slows down the spread of the virus I really wanted to test out whether these masks have an adverse effect on myself whether these masks put me in such a stress so uh, let's to break all this to break to break this let's just take a quick detour so I walked around 1.2 kilometers to the nearest supermarket and as expected the supermarket was very difficult to socially distance but surprisingly to my amusement a lot of people were wearing masks there was hardly any people that was not wearing any masks that that's actually good that means at least Asia is not as fucked as America right now after two hours of shopping and a combined total of one hour of walking and let me add you there were a lot of hills that I had to walk on did the N95 put the negative effect on my body did I feel so uncomfortable that I could not walk at all that I could not wear the mask anymore no like yes it was a little bit Yes, it was a little bit annoying that every few seconds my glasses would be fogged up because of the marks. But I quickly found a trick to that and yeah, my glasses don't get fogged up anymore. Aside from that, the wearing of masks is kind of ignorable. It does not have any noticeable effect on me and uh, I could breathe really normally, I guess. It's even better because all of the pollution has gone. I don't have to inhale a load of dust and smoke every time I go outside. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with wearing a mask. Now that's done with. Let's look at some Facebook groups. So next time you feel like you're all alone, just remember, you're not alone. And your group is waiting for you. Without a doubt, Facebook is one of the biggest accelerator and agent for fake news and all of these conspiracy theories. But recently, Facebook has started cracking down on a lot of these pieces. But one thing, one loophole that keeps all these conspiracies and all these honestly stupid communities alive is Facebook groups. In Facebook groups, it just creates a circle jerk of all these people that have these weird and bizarre ideas and no one's there to correct them, no one's there to tell them these are all the places that you are wrong in and basically call them out on their bullshit right so I'm I will be joining a couple of the groups just so I can get just so I can get information and maybe possibly interview one of those anti-maskers so yeah Is it weird that I'm like genuinely excited? So obviously, uh, just joining the group wouldn't really do anything. So I need to uh, let's see who's up for an interview, who's down for an interview. So this is what I wrote up, right? Uh, hello everyone. I'm an editor. I'm an editor for my school's magazine, which is partially true, and I am working on a project. On a project related to the anti mask movement and I'd love to interview any one of you, especially the admins of this group. Uh, if anyone is interested, please comment. So this is, this is, uh, alright fine, I'm going to post it and let's see, your post has been submitted to the admins, fine, 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 then I'm going to another group and then I'll post the same there. Okay, this actually went through, right? It's actually, uh, uh, actually in the post, and so the admins don't uh, check it. 
So I think I will, yeah, that that's all right. Another one, Andy Marks League 2020. Like the more the merrier. So I'm gonna boost. Yeah. Hello everyone. I'm in. Oh, fuck. Alright, so it's again posting, it's again pending for the moderators. Uh, only time will tell us. Uh, in my time in the group, this one article was brought up to me like countless number of times. So this is the article and it's uh, effectiveness of marks and most anti-maskers bring this up like the end all and be all article and when you look at it, I'm, I, you'd be surprised. There's like a lot of sources, there's a lot of like there's almost citations for almost every single claim that they bring up but uh, but most people don't look at that right and uh, that's my problem with it. So the first claim is on uh, uh, it's about the influenza pandemic influenza pandemic and uh, here we go there's the source right there. And the thing about the influenza pandemic is, it's not that if you read the, like if you read this, uh, like if you actually read the source, it says that the influenza pandemic, the marks were not as effective because, not because of the ineffective of marks, but because how people did wear their marks correct and sometimes how the marks was made by the wrong material. So again, the citations itself debunked the claim that was made in the article. The next one is found that if against viruses and infectious transmission. And in this one, it does not test the. In this one, it does not test the N95 marks, but most anti-maskers use this against the N95 marks. But the thing is, in this article, in this uh, in the citation itself, it tests various cloth marks and marks that are made from other materials. Okay, the next one. So, uh, in this article again, this source, the source does not claim that the marks are ineffective. It claims that making marks mandatory does not really change much because people are not going to wear marks regardless. So again, uh, and and it does also say that uh, while wearing a mask me, the the point of this citation is the point of this article is it says that marks may be effective but they are not as effective as all these other precautions that we can take so yeah it, it basically this citation basically says that yeah marks are effective okay in this one the fourth one i'm in the fourth one right now let's check this out because i remember one or two that I had uh, really yes so in the citation itself the first thing that you see is the editor's note and it clearly says the author has received this the author has received requests in the recent weeks to remove this article. Now reasons have included we don't truly know that cloth masks, face masks are not effective since the data is limited to wearing a cloth mask or face covering is better than doing nothing. And uh, three, the article the article is being used by individuals and groups that support non masks wearing where um, mandated mandated for they are there are now many uh, there are now many modeling studies suggesting that cloth marks or face masks could be effective at flattening the curve so again the citations itself the sources itself debunk the claim of the article but most anti masters but most people don't take that extra effort to read the sources they don't like they don't want they just look at the thumb they just look at the title they just look at the headlines and they're like okay moving on oh, this is sickening all right again most of them target cloth marks and i guess cloth marks like in uh, regards to the pandemic this mask is not exactly effective that's why it's recommended you rather wear something like these right the n95 masks but even this is better than nothing and again these are all based on cloth masks and again in this article itself there are studies claiming that the face masks are effective but most anti-maskers they just read these portions they just read this portion and they go out okay they don't wanna they don't wanna look at both sides 
like as i mentioned earlier most of the research step is basically retroactive they want to look up what they want to look up and they look at the facts that they want to believe they look up the facts that they want not the actual facts okay and risks associated with masks now this one side effects of masks and i uh, went through the entire pdf right i went through the entire thing maybe i have it on my download wait let me just let me just check yes i went through the entire document and at no point were there any negative effects associated with masks so that's completely misleading i'd say that, that's false okay so i read it i read the entire paper it's not that long it's like 20 pages maybe and uh, basically what it states is there's no significant effect of wearing an n95 mask in our day-to-day -day life a normal person will not have any problem with n95 masks the only thing that happens it has an effect on is strenuous physical activities right like running jogging you know boxing and anyone that has half a brain will not do those physical activities wearing a goddamn mask like come on yeah this one okay this one i wanted to address because this is one of the few uh, one of the few uh, one of the few things that i found was uh, really really interesting well you might be like okay this is citation whatever but the thing is the citation that they have linked here this website again this this feels it's not reliable okay it's like pro anti max and a lot of it is like weird it, it it's not it's not legit this website is not legit yeah i, I th that's all to say it's, it's not a reliable source people have not been doing peer review it's not backed by any evidence it's it's just false polyester marks now this claims that pull it's against polyester marks but uh, like N95, right? These things they are made by synthetic plastic from whatever. So yeah, I don't think so. You yeah. again? This is not about like. Yes, I don't think this is damning because again, people are recalling ineffective masks and providing like. Come on, how is this even a point? Okay, in China, two boys had to wear a mask during sports class and fainted and died. Yeah, they weren't in. They weren't in sports class. Okay, you're not supposed to wear masks in like physically strenuous activities. I think anyone with half a brain should do that. And then, in car driver wearing an N95 mask fainted and crashed into a pool. Again, I read the article. There was not many. It was not. We didn't have much detail given to us. And again, causation, I mean, correlation does not mean causation, but again, like, why why would you wear a mask inside your car, first of all? Yeah, that's all I wanted to see. That's all I wanted to see about this one. Long story short, um, no one really interacted with the comment. I thought more people would be more inclined, but not really. So what I did was I went through all the DMs and I contacted all of the managers all of the admins and after getting denied one after another i managed to get some people that were interested but even out of them most of them were not really inclined to do a live conversation they didn't like the fact that i was going to use audio right they were okay with the idea of doing a text uh interview but uh live audio they didn't want it so okay i understand that right so i got like one or two people that were interested and uh one backed out on me and the other one rescheduled to now and it's currently 3 a.m and in the morning and uh yeah i will be preparing i will be writing a, a few questions so if i get nervous i can just look reference at the questions and then ask the questions yeah, just because I'm interviewing an anti-masker does not mean I got I, I go in unprepared. From where I am, I look at this scenario as either I go in like a Ben Shapiro or Hassan Minaj. Ben Shapiro, I just report every question one after another. And Hassan Minaj, I just quietly move, move along. And in post-editing, I just say why this point made by this person was wrong. <sighs> yeah, wish me luck. I mean the worst part about this is I just had my exam still yesterday and uh, 
this is such a mm, uh, such a small thing but uh, i just had my exam till yesterday and i had to wake up till wake up uh, by 5 am for my exams just so i could revise more and i thought once my term break starts I, at least i can sleep in late nope i have to wake up even earlier Today we are joined by one of the admins of the anti-marks coalition. So how would you define yourself? Like an anti-marxer or social activist? How would you define yourself? I would just say that I'm an anti-masker. So what led you to this belief? How did you get involved in this anti-marx belief? And why did you start questioning the validity of Marx? Well, um, honestly, there wouldn't be a belief if the masks weren't mandated to us. And I just think that it's not right to tell people what they're supposed to be wearing. Okay, so a popular trend in the internet right now is calling out everyone that believes in this one and then they label them as a Karen. They would call anyone, they would call you a Karen. So what does that make you, how does that make you feel? Is that insulting in a way? Honestly, no, not for me personally, because I know that they're just trying to get a rise out of me. But I'm sure for some people it's considered an insult. Okay, so how do you go by like to get information these days? It's sometimes some people find it very strenuous, some people find it very tedious. How do you gather your information? How do most anti marx wearers gather the information and go about the research it's very difficult to find information on anti-mask because a lot of places are deleting information on it that the uh, leftist media doesn't want us to know i find a lot of information off of uh google and stuff before it's deleted what exactly is your main problem with masks? Why is wearing masks such a difficulty for most anti mask wearers? Uh, for me personally or for mostly the community? Uh, you can give both answers. Okay, uh, for me personally, the masks on my face just don't work for me, I guess. Um, I'm very overweight and therefore I have problems breathing with even without a mask so putting a mask on my face makes it even worse and not only that i'm pretty sure i have autism and i'm just gonna keep touching my face and that's one of the things that they don't want you to do so uh you see again now uh, uh that um, wearing a mask makes it difficult for you but uh, like from personal experience like I know many people that wear a mask on a daily basis because from where I where I'm from right uh, The country is pretty polluted and just to go out there. You need to wear a really heavy mask and uh, Just to make sure that you don't get asthma or something asthma or something uh, and People of all different weight categories wear the masks without any problem uh, like and again there have been countless uh, research saying that yes there is a little bit of uh, effects of masks but unless you are doing something that's physically strenuous unless you are doing something that uh, really goes uh, that puts your body to the test uh, the marks won't really have an effect on you and uh, that's what i wanted to ask uh, even though there's like overwhelming amount of research overwhelming amount of facts that uh, saying that the marks are useful why do people still believe that uh, the marks are not useful why do people still want to go out there and try to prove the government wrong it's not that the masks are useful or uh, not useful against pollution it's that they're not useful against the virus because the fibers in the masks are bigger size than the coronavirus and they say that the coronavirus won't get through unless there's droplets, but I don't believe that that's true. Uh, there has been, I'm not sure if it's misinformation or not, but I've seen articles where it's supposed to be airborne or it's supposed to be 
people touching things and then touching their eyes and face and nose and it's getting in through that way. Um, and I just honestly don't know what exactly to believe and what not to believe. Well, uh, actually, it's a combination of all those things from what I've researched. Uh, so it's it's through air droplets, uh, like water droplets, small water droplets that we our bodily fluid, and uh, it's airborne because they have a tendency when we sneeze, when we cough, they have a tendency to like stick around in the air. So when we touch it, uh, it might get on our hand, it might get on our faces. So that's what I've learned. But again, uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm not an expert to uh, to see, you know. So, you see, uh, again, uh, marks are not useful. Uh, can you specify the types of marks that you're going against? Uh, currently, the, you know, those common blue masks. The N95? Uh, right. Well, uh, no, the, the cloth masks. The blue ones. The ones that they ship out to us. You see them all the time. Yeah, those are called, I think, I think what you're refer, uh, referring to is the N95. And to a point, I agree with you. When we use common cloth masks, they're not well equipped to handle the COVID. So that's why the N95 masks works, but that's a whole different topic. Uh, why is the problem for people to wear a mask in public, given the pandemic? Because, uh, uh, and uh, stop me if you don't follow along. Um, most people... Um, most people don't wear a mask to grocery stores, uh, at least from what I know of and the anti-mask uh, movement. Uh, do you agree of not wearing a mask in public areas? Uh, I try not to go into public areas anymore because our governor has enforced us to wear a mask everywhere that we go. So it's made me made it really difficult for me to get groceries and just be around the general public. Yeah, I've got home delivery service right now. I used to go to the store all the time, and since masks weren't mandatory, I wouldn't wear one. And whenever I need to go to the store for gas, I will wear a mask, but I'm going to wear it under my nose so that I can breathe. I mean, again, I don't think there's a exact problem with breathing in the mask but uh, i can't speak for you now you keep on bringing the fact about how the government is trying to control us uh, could you like elaborate on that there is a conspiracy going around that the government is trying to control us it's a common subject for um our group actually and a lot of the stuff floating around is that they think they want us to go into a cashless society so that um, so that they can track everything that we're doing. And what was another one? Oh, another one of those conversations that we've had in our group is that everyone's following what Bill Gates has to say, and Bill Gates isn't even a uh, doctor or anything. They're just doing what he wants and he wants everyone to be vaccinated and for it to be mandatory. Uh, why do you think so, the government is trying to control us? I'm not sure. That's not something that I really talk about personally. Um, I would try contacting some of the other admins in our group for that because I just think, I just think I, I don't want to wear a mask because I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want to get vaccinated because I don't want to get vaccinated. Okay, you bring up the point of vaccination. Uh, are you an anti-vaxxer per se? Absolutely not. I think that um, if the vaccines have been working for several years that you should get vaccinated. It's most of them are not dangerous, but the vaccine that they're coming up with for the coronavirus is all happening. Seems like it's super fast, and I'm just not ready to take a vaccine that hasn't been going through many trials for a couple of years at least. 
I mean, we are in a situation like uh, I I do understand your concerns, but we need to understand that again. I think this is a new type of virus, and we really don't know. So that that can be left up for debate. Then uh, you also bring up uh, how you do not trust Bill Gates. So why? What exactly do you not like about him? One, he's not a doctor, so he should have absolutely no say on whether or not we are going to be vaccinating everyone and making it mandatory. Two, he didn't even vaccinate his own children, and he's telling us that we need to vaccinate our children. So why do you think uh, vaccinations should not be made mandatory? It's a matter of choice, really. This is a miracle. Okay. Uh, uh, and a lot of people bring up the First Amendment or something, uh, saying that we have a right not to wear a mask. Do you agree with that? Hold on. I... I don't actually know the First Amendment by heart, I'm sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. Like, I don't know my constitution by heart, but like a lot of people bring that up, right? A lot of people bring the fact that they have a right not to wear a mask. Do you agree with that? Hold on, because I actually do want to answer your, your question before about the First Amendment, so I'm looking it up. No law respecting an establishment of religion, prohibiting free exercise of speech or press, or the right to pe people to peacefully assemble. Right. People bring up the First Amendment because it says the that you should not make a law stopping people from peacefully assembling. Uh, churches. They made all of our churches closed because of the coronavirus, and that's also freedom of religion. And not only that, it's the freedom to peacefully assemble. But for some reason, people can go on and have protests for Black Lives Matter or whatever they want, and that's completely okay. I mean, uh, I kind of get where you're coming from, but then again, uh, the reason that protests for Black Lives Matter was deemed necessary was because, uh, like, this was the time to act. If we if we let it go, if we just let it fizzle down, it wouldn't have the same impact, and we could not really make any difference during the protest. Like, if if per se we waited until God knows how long, until the lockdown ends. Uh, but like churches, yeah. But like the churches and uh, religious activities while they may be important for like some people it's not like you won't really it won't really change it doesn't really make any difference whether you go to a church for some week or not i personally don't think black lives matter made a difference uh george floyd was murdered by a police officer and black lives matter went through a bunch of neighborhoods and destroyed them not only were they neighborhoods, but some of them were black neighborhoods. Okay, uh, this is like going off topic a lot. So I actually want to bring up this because uh, I looked into it. And uh, under the U.S. Constitution's 10th Amendment uh, and the Supreme Court's decision overly, over nearly 200 years ago, U.S. state government has like primary authority to uh, uh, stop uh, or stop uh, public gatherings or stop public uh, businesses under the authority to take public health emergency actions during uh, such outbursts of uh, these diseases so doesn't that render the people that use uh, it's america when it's a free state according to the first amendment doesn't that render the First Amendment a little bit uh, useless in this context? I don't think that this should be a public emergency because we're, this virus isn't really killing that many people. Well, actually, the flu every year kills more people than the virus. Uh, 
Uh, actually, I'd like to disagree with that. Like, COVID-19, this disease, uh, has is like the first pandemic that the world has faced in like decades. And this is very much... Uh, this is very much a uh, uh, international crisis and uh, like worldwide it has uh, uh, killed around 70, uh, seven, uh, 732,000 people. Don't you think that's like quite startling? Don't you think that's... Uh, don't you think that's a high enough kill count for it to be an emergency? How many people did you say it killed? 700. 732,000 people. And um, we have about, what, 7 billion people in the world? I mean, yes, that's like, in that context, it's uh, it may make it seem less, right? But we need to understand that the Second World War killed around 300 uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, no, I'm sorry, 229,000 people. That's way less compared to the COVID. Okay, but according to my math, you said it's killed 773,000 people, and there's about 7 billion people in this world. So. That's about 0.1% of the entire population. Yes, if we keep it st uh, st statistically, it is like it does make it undermine everything. But still, those are 700,000 people that lost their lives. And that's a lot of people. Like it's more than we can actually comprehend. And how many of those people were elderly? Elderly or not, those are still people. So uh, we need to take action so obviously like it should not be a debate that uh, the covid pandemic should be a health emergency i've noticed that at least in michigan that there has been more cases of coronavirus however there have been less people dying and that just shows that the virus is either weakening or going I mean, unless we take like actions such as staying at home, wearing a mask while going out, and unless there's a vaccine that comes out that actually works, uh, I don't think it's going to be going out. I don't think it's going to be dying soon. The virus is not going to go out. And again, just because in one area it's going down does not mean that uh, it's, uh, it's a good sign, obviously. But then again, we should not undermine, like, if we just... If you just look at the science this early on and we go outside and then we become more reckless, I think uh, I think it's going to spread the virus even more. Don't you agree on that one? I'm sorry, that was a lot of words for me to process. Okay, okay, I think, uh, I think, uh, like, let's end it off right so i just have a final question uh, like throughout this whole debacle what is the most frustrating thing to you what is the most what frustrating thing what angers you the most uh what frustrates me the most is that um i get asked at the door when i go shopping uh i get asked what my medical reason is for not wearing a mask and that's actually illegal in america they're not allowed to ask you according to hipaa laws and i don't feel like i should have to explain that to them not exactly because uh, uh i think again you can test me on this one but i think i read somewhere that it's actually in the law to make sure that uh, people are not frauding people, people are not scamming people. That uh, the uh, the the companies, the providers have to ask people about their medical health condition and confirm it. I don't think that's right because that's none of their business. It's my business. That's between me and my doctor. 
I mean, again, when you're entering to a private property, it is their business, isn't it? I am not talking about private property. I'm talking about public property, grocery stores, rented out buildings that people Wait. have their businesses at. Yeah, that, that is private property, isn't it? Because it's owned by a company that's privately owned. That is private property and they have to abide by the company laws. Renting is not owning. No, it is in a way. Because when I rent off a place, I become the temporary owner of that place. Okay, let me give you an example. You can see that, let's say a stranger appears in your house and then this says, I want to live here. It's really within my right to live here. Uh, would you keep him, kick him out or not? Would I kick someone out if he was renting the property? No, if he just appeared and he claims to have, let's say again, if he claims to have a medical condition uh, and then he comes to your house and then he starts living there and you're you're you are not pleased by it don't you have the right to kick him out that's not the same as what i was talking about no, it, i was saying that no, no it, 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 is, it is it is a place no, it is pretty if similar. You're renting somewhere, then that means it's not exactly your property. I mean, okay, then like, let's. For example, if I missed a payment when I was renting somewhere, they would have the right to kick me out and evict me. Yeah, but again, you make the leap. But then again, the companies are paying rent, they are, they are giving rent. So temporarily, that's their property. And uh, again, like uh, it's quite similar because again, your house is your property, isn't it? So you have the complete right to kick someone out, like a complete stranger out, if they just operate to your house and start displeasing you. So it'd be the same for corporations as well and businesses. If they have a customer that they do not like, they also have the right to kick them out. Okay, so thank you for having me. Before I go off, uh, how does this make me feel? Looking at this, does it anger you? Does it upset you? No, I just don't want to wear it. I don't want to wear a mask now. I just want to breathe. I don't want to be a mask. I just want to be me. I thought this was the land of the free, but I woke up from the dream. I don't want to be a mask, oh, I just want to be me I don't want to wear a mask, so they say that I'm selfish They want me to be like the masses, they're better myself helpless I really don't want to wear a mask, I mean it's no way to live If everybody's wearing a mask, how do you know who they is? And even if I wore a mask, how long you think that gon' last? Y'all must think we're stupid, you never did it in the past It went through the pandemic, after pandemic, and y'all sat on your ass Now six months through this pandemic, you want to mandate a mask Why well, I don't want to wear a mask, cause I can't breathe Fogging up my sunglasses till I can't see We shouldn't have to wear a mask, of course, and that's unconstitutional You could think of cloth to stop a virus, but I know I won't I wanna wear a mask because it makes me itch I get all red in the face and suffer from headaches and shit Don't wanna wear a mask because it's no science to fact The prolonged effect that it has when you go everywhere with a mask Why would I wear a mask? I'm not a criminal, I don't wanna wear a mask I feel like there's subliminal for the sheep out there Who just wanna be heard I wanna be heard It's different though I don't want to wear a mask, no Put the force in me Yeah, so I definitely took the Hassan Minaj method But don't blame me, it was like 3am in the morning Don't blame me Now, I was initially planning to drop this whole documentary Because she was not very confrontational 
but like later she went on to post this thing just had the most annoying interview today regarding anti-mask this guy was asking me why don't you wear a mask and try to guilt me by saying you don't want to protect uh, protect and wouldn't you rather be safe than sorry this virus has killed uh, seven over 700k people and i said yeah 700k is what's that there's 7 billion people on this earth that's only just blah 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 you get what i mean not only is that misleading yes it's 0.01 and uh, and compared to the world's population it's kind of low but the thing is it's still 700,000 people and within such a short amount of time take it in this way it's 700,000 people that were living before that are no longer alive and that's a lot of people no matter what you say that's a lot of people now that reaffirms the fact that she still holds her morality to be higher than others and wants to post off and wants her peers to approve of her actions and i also asked around i also cross-checked it with the doctors and just because you're fat it does not mean that you're gonna have difficulties wearing a mask there's no correlation between that and secondly if you have a medical condition regarding wearing a mask it's better that you stay at home and not go anywhere else because if you have a long condition it's worse for you to contract the covid and third there are some there are like specialized ventilators if you really have difficulty wearing masks that's a little bit in the expensive side but the alternative is to stay home yeah and that does it i guess that's that's the video i guess i'm not sure if you can call this a documentary videos uh, it, damn it really did take a long time to make hello future emo here and uh, there's a couple of more things that i wanted to add for the fact that how the leftist media is deleting stuff every time that that's just a cheap excuse because every time i asked anyone in that group about any sources or citations every time they're like oh yeah i don't have it anymore because they've deleted it that just seems like a really poor excuse and like i tried to convince so many people i tried to change their mind but they are like just so stubborn they are like so fulfilled with their own delusion that they don't want to accept the reality and second thing um i i think i figured out that uh, I, I think i realized that everything that they do ultimately boils down to them being extremely selfish so unless it harms them they're not going to change their mind at all and i genuinely hope all anti-maskers get the covid i'm not even being sarcastic here and one more pet peeve like facebook really does not have a good reporting system for the groups like w w look at this list like anti-maskers really don't fit into anything it's like in a gray area so yeah i hope facebook changes it but who uses that website anyways it really did take a long time to make and i'd appreciate it if you dropped a like and share the video and yeah subscribe to my channel i will be working on other longer form videos i guess yeah <laughs>